Welcome to the second part of this video series on Excel VBA message boxes. In this video, we're going to look at how to use message boxes to obtain confirmation from the user. Now, why is this important? Well, getting confirmation supports user interaction and user interaction is an important principle in spreadsheet development and in software development uh, more generally. User interaction means we're giving information to the user uh, when they want it. So for example, if we have a macro in the workbook that's going to make fundamental changes uh, to the workbook, then we want to seek the user's permission. We want to make sure that the user is ready to commit to that. And that is what uh, a confirmation message box is going to allow us to do. Spreadsheets with these features, they have good user interaction. Uh, users feel more confident using them. They're getting the right information at the right time. It's an important feature of a strong spreadsheet. So let's get into it. How do we actually create these uh, in Excel? So I've got the download file here. Uh, you can download the file from the website, of course, and work along with me. Now, I'm now in module one uh, in this file. So you'll find some code in here. The code in here is not the topic of this video series. All the code is doing is going through this database and sorting the database into uh, genders. So it's putting all the men, the, uh, the women, the others, and the no answers uh, in different columns. So that's what the code is doing. So this is an example of an operation that is quite involved, we might say. There's going to be lots of code running. We're going to be making fundamental changes to the spreadsheet, changing cell values. Uh, this routine also clears uh, one of the worksheets. So these are things that we want the user to be aware of before they commit to actually doing them. So where would the message box code go? Uh, in the routine. Well, we're going to put it at the beginning of the routine. We don't want to run any of the code that's doing the processing before getting uh, this confirmation. So let's get started with this code. And what we'll do is we'll recycle uh, the previous code. Recycling code is often a good way uh, to speed up coding tasks. So we've got the, the basic message box code there, which we're uh, familiar with. And we're going to use this as a starting point. Uh, the critical component here is this zero here. This zero determines the type of message box. If we set this to zero, we get a simple message box, but we're after a bit more than that now. We're after a yes, no message box, so the user can click on, on yes or no. To get this, we say VB yes, no. This is gonna give us, um, give us our message box. So let's just run this. We're gonna step into this using the F8 key on a Windows PC using the F8 key. Stepping into it, we can see our message box has, has flashed up there. We've still got the value of the active cell. We're going to change that. But importantly, we can see we've got these yes, no buttons here. So the user can click on these. That, that's going to take the code in one direction uh, or another. So we've got the, uh, the box there, the yes, no message box. Uh, let's just adjust the text uh, so it makes sense. So here we're referring to uh, the value in the active cell. We don't want that anymore. That's not useful for us anymore. Much better to have a text string here saying something like, do you wish to proceed? Question mark. There we go. So that's what's going to appear in the middle uh, of the message box. Then we've got our message box type. We're happy with that. And then finally, the title uh, of the message box. So let's just call this uh, confirmation. This is, of course, uh, the main theme of this video. There we go. So again, I'm going to save the file, control S, F8 key on a Windows PC, or you can just go to debug and step into. And then I'm just going to step through the code. We can see we've got our beautiful yes, no message box there. This is going to reassure the user. So we've got the message box uh, flashing up, uh, but it's not actually doing anything uh, at the moment. So if we click no, uh, it's just going to carry on going through the code. That's not what we want. When the user clicks no, we want to exit uh, the routine. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need, well, you might want to stop the video here and think about how you might do that. What particular coding constructs are going to allow you to do that? Well, I'm thinking conceptually, we want Excel to go one of two ways. We want it to continue with the code if the user says yes. We want it to stop the code if the user says no. So there's a condition. Uh, so we're going to need a conditional statement. We've just done a video series on conditional statements. You can find it uh, on the channel, conditional statements for beginners. So how do we incorporate this idea of a conditional statement? If the user clicks no, we want to exit the routine. 
So we're going to go if here and if message box, do you want to proceed? I'm going to just put some brackets around here uh, for completeness, brackets around uh, the message box. That's, as I said, adds completeness. This should ensure that everything works. And then we're going to say equals VB no. And then there we go. So what's this all about? Well, we're saying to Excel VBA equals VB no. We're saying to Excel if the user clicks on the no button. That's how we translate that idea into VBA. If message box equals VB no, we're saying to Excel if the user clicks on the no, we want you to do this. So what do we want Excel to do uh, when the user clicks the no button? Well, ideally, we just like to exit uh, the routine. So what's the line of code to do that? We can just say uh, exit sub. There we go. And the VBA, VBA editor uh, doesn't seem to have any problems with that. So this, this is looking good. This is an example, by the way, of a simple one line conditional statement. If the user clicks no, we want to exit the routine. Don't do anything else. If the user clicks yes, then this route, this condition rather, will not be met. This condition says if the user clicks no. If the user clicks yes, the condition will not be met. That means Excel will not go to the code to run if the condition is met. Don't worry if you don't understand any of that. It's not directly relevant uh, to this video series. We do have a series on Excel of VBA conditional statements for beginners that you may want to have a look at. Right, so let's have a look at this. Going to save the file, Control S. F8 to step into the code. We can see we've got our code here, uh, our message box here rather popping up. So we're just, just going to hit no. And we've got to exit sub, hit F8 again, and then we can see that Excel has stopped uh, running the code here. So this seems to be working well. On the other hand, what if we run this code? So I'm just going to hit the play button here, run this code, and then hit the yes button. Excel is going to continue and go through the code. Just to prove that, let's just trim this database down just to make it easier to deal with. And then I'm going to just put, uh, let's, let's run this code quickly. Just going to run the code and hit yes. And then what have we got on the uh, list by gender sheet? Okay, we can see we've got five entries or so there. So what if I put my name at the bottom here? So six, here we go, this should do. Okay, so now, well, in order to prove this is working, then we're going to run the code, and now I'm going to say no. So if we say no here, Excel will not run the code, and that means that on this list sheet, my name is not appearing there yet because we put that in after Excel had previously run the code and when the confirmation box came up, we said no. So just to complete this, let's run the code. F5 key, F5 key. this time we're going to hit yes. And then we can see that my name uh, is now here, which shows that Excel, the second time when we click yes on the confirmation box, Excel did uh, run the code. So that's the end of this video. We've talked about um, Excel VBA message boxes for confirmation. This idea of confirmation is so important. Supports user interaction. Gonna, it's going to help build user confidence uh, in your spreadsheet. It's going to take a good spreadsheet to a potentially really excellent spreadsheet. So we're using message boxes, confirmation message boxes to support user interaction. But we're not stopping there. It gets even better. So we're running a report in this case. And once the report is, is, is run, then we would like to tell the user, or ideally the user would like to know that the re report is run. Because we can see at the moment there's no real uh, indication that the report has finished. So that's one thing we want to tell the user the report has finished. Secondly, we'd like to give some helpful summary feedback to the user about the report. That is using message boxes for user feedback. That is the topic of the next video. I'll see you then.